Hi everyone. I'm going to read aloud Luna and Me by Jenny Sue Kostecki Shaw, the true story of a girl who lived in a tree to save a forest. Have you ever climbed a tree and stayed there all night? Once there was a girl who lived in a tree for over two years. Nearly a thousand years ago, a redwood tree named Luna sprouted on a hillside. She grew up in a big family with strong roots. Julia was born some 13,000 moons later. Her family was always moving. Upon arriving in each new town, she scurried off to explore the forests. I'll be home by sunrise, Mom. She whispered her secrets to the animals, and soon the animals trusted Julia. Once, a butterfly rested on her finger all day which is how she got her nickname, Butterfly. Luna, the redwood tree, held butterflies too, in wise sp spotted owls, friendly banana slugs, gentle turkey vultures, daring flying squirrels, shy foxes, and a menagerie of forest friends. Luna often reassured the animals, if my arms seem full, it is not a chore. I will gladly grow more, and she always did. One day, Butterfly wandered into an ancient cathedral of redwoods. Her heart beat wildly. Thump, a thump, a thump, a thump. Hello, a curious butterfly called up into Luna. Is anyone home? Broken branches stuck out of Luna's trunk like porcupine quills and her side was tagged with a blue X. The redwood quivered with excitement, the way she always did when a new visitor arrived. Luna thought, do you like to climb trees? Give me a try, oh please. All a flutter, Butterfly called out, here I come. When she reached a comfortable perch, Butterfly introduced herself. I am Butterfly, and you, Luna, are a ladder to the moon. Luna smiled and sighed. Welcome, little butterfly. You are brave to have ventured up so high. Butterfly marveled at Luna's view of the world. She spied a river twisting this way and that, past Luna's countless brothers and sisters and cousins. But then she looked closer. Butterfly realized that the blue X meant on Luna's trunk. The tree would soon be chopped down and harvested. Butterfly's spirit wilted. She knew that people needed wood for building houses and furniture and for making paper and books too. But trees make the oxygen we breathe, she thought. Animals need trees for their homes. And without tree roots, mountainsides can wash away in heavy rains. Don't trees have a right to just be? Suddenly, an idea sprouted deep inside Butterfly. If I stay with Luna, no one will cut her down. Luna thought, then I will live another thousand years. But Butterfly would need a lot of support. Her friends were eager to help. Heave ho, up you go. They hoisted her food, water, a stove, fuel, and a tarp. She would need to tightly pack her waist in bags until her friends returned to haul it away. That night, she slept under a tapestry of starlight. Ooh, ah, the Milky Way flies right over you, Luna. The next morning, Butterfly awoke to voices far below. How can we help? You are strong. We believe in you. Do you need anything? More granola? I'll come down if you promise not to cut Luna down. You are not allowed to be up there. Go home. This is our tree. She'll come down when it storms. Up top, Butterfly held on tight to what she believed in, Luna. But living 180 feet high in a tree wasn't easy. Her treehouse was the size of a sandbox. She cooked all her food in one small pot, and there wasn't a bathroom. She had to get creative. She collected rainwater to drink and bathe in. At first, Raindrops popped like popcorn on her tarp roof, lulling her to sleep. But soon, the refreshing rain grew into fierce storms. Hang tight, it may rain all day and all night. Oh no! 
Butterfly could barely hold on. Lightning struck all around and thunder shook her courage. I want to go home, she yelled, but the howling wind swept her voice away. Butterfly climbed inside her cocoon and drifted to sleep. In her dream, Luna spoke to her. I'm frightened, Luna. I will hold you till the sky is calm and blue. When she woke, she discovered the sun, her friends, and her wings. Butterfly kicked off her shoes and spent the day turning her treehouse into a home. To exercise, she climbed barefoot to the very top of Luna every morning. With sticky, sappy feet, she crawled like a spider up and down Luna's trunk. She explored each branch and met all her tree mates, and still there was more. Deep within Luna's split trunk, Butterfly discovered a magical cave. It was alive. She found ferns, huckleberry, furry green moss, tiny mushrooms, bugs, chickadees, hummingbirds, chipmunks, and even a fox. Luna, Butterfly chirped. You are a forest within a forest. Luna beamed even brighter. Butterfly knew what she had to do. Her friends gathered supplies she would need. Solar-powered phone, check. Hand-cranked solar radio, check. Books about ancient forests, check. Duct tape, check. Pens and paper for writing letters, check. Butterfly shared stories of Luna in the forest to anyone who would listen. And many people did. Busy days whirred and blurred into weeks and months in a whole year. And then another year. Butterfly worried. Will Luna ever be safe? But then finally, on the 738th day, a message arrived. Butterfly, Luna is safe. No one will cut her down. Love your friends. P.S. You can come down now. As her toes touched the soft earth, Butterfly cried, We did it, Luna! But she didn't want to leave her friend. Butterfly hugged Luna goodbye and heard Luna's voice in her heart. As you grow strong and tall towards the sun, remember to bend with the wind, and when you dream and dance in the rain, I'll be here doing the same. The Luna Preserve. Please tread lightly. The end.